So this is um, a little bit of an overview of your x-ray OSCE. Obviously you will have had your x-ray interpretation lecture delivered within uh, the orthopaedics or musculoskeletal podiatry lecture series. Um, and that PowerPoint sort of goes through um, in a bit more granular detail what to look for. Um, but you'll be able to see from this unmanned station that you'll be given a sheet that gives you some prompts around things that you need to make commentary on. Here's an x-ray. Uh, you'll probably be given um, a picture on a screen, but you might be given a nice actual plain film x-ray. Um, as per the prompts on your unmanned station sheet, um, what we're looking for is for you to make commentary on alignment. Um, you obviously want to be specific, so if you're talking about adducto varus, you want to relate this to adducto varus of the fifth digit. If you're talking about adduction, you want to align this to something, so it is adduction of the first metatarsal. If you've got displacement sesamoids or whatever, again, talk and be specific about what you're making commentary on with alignment. Um, bone density, you're looking for uh, things like subchondral sclerosis, so areas where you've either got increased radiolucency or increased areas of uh, radio opacity. So whiter or blacker bits, basically. Uh, the other thing that you can also look for is width of diaphysis, so narrowing in the diaphysis, so the shaft of the long bone is also indicative uh, of reduced bone density. C is for cartilage spacing, so again you can put there is reduced or irregular cartilage spacing, but that doesn't tell me very much. What I need you to do is tell me it's in the second neck foul joint or in the first neck foul joint. Around that, you could probably make commentary within uh, some of kind of your periarticular findings. So if there's osteophytic change or periarticular erosions or subchondral um, cysts uh, that might be typical features of rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, and again, you know, appearing in multiple areas, again, be specific with where you can see these things, um, which kind of feeds into your last D section of this, which is your distribution. So is this bilateral symmetrical? Uh, is this in a single ray? Is this in, you know, multiple joints? Uh, because again, that's quite a useful thing for us to be aware of, as particularly in rheumatological things, it aligns to mono or poly kind of uh, arthropathies like gout or uh, psoriatic arthritis or rheumatoid arthritis uh, and the joints that it affects again, it's addictive. Uh, the S for ABCD uh, stands for soft tissues. Obviously, typically we don't really use x-rays to investigate soft tissues, but you can see this light white area around the bone. Obviously, bones absorb more x-rays, so they appear whiter than more radiodense typically. The skin will still absorb some of the x-ray, so you can still, and soft tissue, so you can still see some soft tissue, but really it's not going to tell you a tremendous amount. What you might see is sort of marked swelling. So if there's any real weird, big, lumpy areas, typically around the first neck foul, then it might be indicative that there's been trauma and there's loads of edema, or there's gout maybe around that joint. Those things you can see, but typically if you want to look at soft tissues, you're going to need a different form of imaging. Um, it's useful then to give you some sort of diagnosis. So based on all your findings, has this patient got HIV? Do you think they've got rheumatoid arthritis? Uh, do you think they've got hallux limitus, hallux rigidus? Uh, do you think they've got just osteophytic change? Do you think they've got a stress fracture or osteopenia, osteoporosis? Whatever you think based on the findings that you've laid out to me. Um, and then the commentary just on, is it an AP or a DP? Um, I'll accept either, so anterior, posterior, or dorsal plantar, more relevant to us, or is it a lateral view? They're the only two I'll ever give you. You can always certainly get APDP because we see more and there's more things to make commentary on. And given that you are second year podiatry students and you are not radiology or diagnostic radiologist students, uh, I am not expecting you to be an out and out expert in this. I'm expecting you to be able to reasonably make some sort of yeah, I can see what they're saying, comment on this. So just say what you see using correct anatomical terminology uh, and correct terminology to describe um, characteristic features of x-ray. 
It doesn't have to be in agreement with your friend. It doesn't have to be even in agreement with me. It just has to be reasonable and it has to be specific and articulate. So if you think you can see subchondral sclerosis here, then I will say, yeah, I can see what they're saying. There is reasonably an area of increased white, uh, so increased radio density, which is indicative of that. So don't overthink this. Just say what you see. Uh, and I'll give you reasonable leeway on it because as I say, we're not expecting to be experts in X-ray interpretation. We're expecting you to have some understanding of it and more so some understanding of the terminology. So when you read these things within X-ray reports that patients might come to or GPs might send as referrals, you have an understanding of what they're saying to you and you have an understanding of what that means.